Hi guys, hope everyone's doing good. Guess what? With the summer outside and crazy heat as usual, my portable IC unit today stopped working. It was doing just fine and out of the blue it stopped blowing um, cold air. So everything works on it. The fan turns on, connected to Wi-Fi. Uh, you can change the temperature, switch it to different modes, but no cold air coming out. So usually this happens for two reasons. Number one, either your unit has a leak and the free one took off, or uh, the compressor doesn't start or might be something else. In my case, I, will, I listen really, really carefully. And what I've noticed when I'm turning the unit on, I don't hear the compressor kicking in. So I assume it's something up with the compressor. Either the compressor went dead completely or maybe there is an electrical issue that doesn't allow the compressor to start. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna uh, disassemble the unit and see what's going on there. So it's a high sense unit, dual hose, 8000 BTU. Uh, you can see them everywhere. Uh, or you can see kind of the same uh, AC from other companies. So, um, yeah, if you can hear, it's just the fan blowing, no cold air. So I'm going to do, I'm going to remove it. Uh, I'm going to disassemble it and see what's happening. So disassembling, it's actually pretty easy. Uh, you remove that uh, filter in the back, right? and uh, just look for the bolts and screws that's keeping these outside panels together. Uh, there are quite a few of them, right? Uh, be careful when you remove them. Before you're removing all these uh, screws and bolts, uh, make sure your uh, unit is uh, not powered up. Uh, unplug it from the outlet, right? And... Uh, uh, just to make sure not get electrocuted, nothing like that. So, yeah, as you see, I already removed all the, uh, the screws and uh, the back panel is coming out pretty fast. It's a simple process. No issues there. It just, it's been held in place by some clips. So, sorry, I'm doing this with one hand only. Uh, with two hands it's comes out pretty easy I assume just wiggle it a little bit and it's gonna come off pretty fast okay here it goes it's out okay yeah if you can know if you see on the side those clips right there this is what's holding the back panel in place after removing those screws all right so you have over here the condenser coil on the bottom of the fan and that's the compressor right there the one and i didn't hear it to start when i was plugging the unit in and the compressor is kind of cold considering the unit just ran the compressor is kind of cold so i assume it didn't start Okay, now we're going to go ahead and remove the, the front panel. Uh, it's kind of uh, the same uh, process. Just look for the screws that's holding it in place. In my case, I have two on top over here. Okay, two on each side, one on each side, kind of in the middle. All right. On the other side too and there is one in the back in, on the bottom here in the front of the unit so just remove these six screws too and the um, front panel should, should come out pretty fast kind of the same thing wiggle it around a little bit and it will just pop up Just be careful and then set it uh, aside nicely. I'll make sure you're not gonna break all those um, LCD front 
screen and also the connections to the buttons and stuff. Now over here you have another panel that actually protects the motherboard and all the electronic components in there. Uh, two screws, again, easy, really easy to remove. Okay, so I removed the panel and this is what we're looking for. Okay, you have one big capacitor and two small ones. The round big one is for the compressor. The square small ones are for the fans, evaporator and condenser fans. So considering my fans are working fine, those two capacitors should be just fine. So I would assume the compressor one is bad. So we'll go ahead and uh, remove. Before you remove the cables, make sure you short circuit the capacitor the terminals uh, to discharge any electric electricity you have left in there because uh, that's it's actually dangerous make sure you always if you remove a capacitor make sure it's always discharged just shorten the terminals for a couple of seconds and sh this should discharge any electricity left in there okay well the capacitor so what the capacitor does it actually stores the electricity to give give the uh, compressor or the electrical motor the that extra kick that it needs is to start sometimes it goes bad and um, the compressor in my case doesn't have enough juice to uh, get started so um, check out the capacitor you have uh, the most important thing it's actually that uh, 50 uh, mic uh, microfarads right that's the important apart you need if it's bad you need to replace it with something similar i didn't test it because they're pretty cheap like ten dollars so i'm just gonna go ahead order a new one and replace it you saw my capacitor came today all right uh, it's a little bit taller than the original original one but that's not a problem because i've measured the housing and the housing uh, except like four accepts four inch capacitor uh, the factory one was like three inches so the important one again are the specs you look at the microfarads and make sure you do not go uh, lower than the voltage rated so the factory one was rated for 250 vac i couldn't find the 250 vac so i got the one that's for, for 370 450 which is going to work perfectly in the uh, 250. so i've installed it here already and did it a test run and looks like the compressor kicked in. So the compressor is getting hot, which is normal. And if you see already, uh, the pipes are cold and there is sweat already forming on them. Uh, that means that uh, free one is circulating and my unit actually it has the free one so it was the compressor in my case and I already feel cold air on the other side of the unit kind of blowing up So I went ahead actually and put everything back together again. The new capacitor went in there perfectly. I'm going to go ahead and do another test run, uh, making sure everything uh, goes good and it starts well. You notice the kick, that was the compressor kicking in and you hear the buzzing. So it looked like this was my issue, the unit. Uh, the pipes are getting cold on the evapora evaporator co uh, coil and they're getting sweaty. So yeah, I got lucky and it was just a bad capacitor that needed to be replaced. So it's running well, 
I'm gonna shut it down, put it all back together, connect it to the window. Now let's see what's gonna happen. Okay, so I've assembled it, set it all together, did the connection, the intake and the exhaust. This unit's come with two hoses because they are basically, uh, they accumulate no water while uh, they're working. Uh, the water is kind of evaporated from the bottom and blown outside, so that's why they need two hoses too. And also the hot air from the uh, condenser coil is yet uh, blown outside too. So I hooked it up, and as you see, the temperature is starting dropping already from 81 to 79. This is the room that I was not getting a lot of normal AC from the house, so. The unit works. I hope this guy uh, this helps. And again, you working electricity. Make sure everything is disconnected. Make sure you be safe. And uh, if you're not sure what you're doing, doubles uh, don't do it or uh, research all the things before. Hope all this helps. Thank you, guys.